Hello. My regular viewers know that I'm usually working on audio and video equipment, such as this ancient 1978 vintage uh, video recorder from Philips. But you know, when I'm not working on audio and video equipment, I like to go to the gym. And I have featured something that I picked up from our local gym uh, some time ago on this channel. Well, the other day I was up the gym and the owner asked me if I could help with these. These are controllers for professional uh, exercise bikes and they have a bit of design fail. And I fixed one and so he's gave me a pile more to work on. I bought in some replacement parts. Let's see if we can make these better than new. Let's get stuck in. These are branded Schwinn and they have well, a design fail, really. So let's see if we can make them uh, a good deal more uh, robust than they were from new. And they're very expensive to replace. You know, they cost hundreds of pounds to replace. So we can come up with a way of making these better. Right, we have seven of these units to repair. And I've done one already, which is already back at the gym and in use. Let's show you what the problem is. The on-off switch, well, the on operation is quite slow. When you press the button and switch it on, it doesn't come on instantly. And I think part of the problem is that people tend to push too hard to try to get some life out of it. And in doing so, they're breaking the uh, membrane on the front of this control panel. But additionally, as well as that, the switch on the inside very often fails as well. So perhaps that's also contributing to the wear. So let's see if we can do better. Let one of these has batteries in it, I think, here we go. So this one, if we go past this broken material here, we'll just find a small uh, switch in there and we press it for a moment and that's how it powers up. And you press it for several seconds and it will power down. Right, uh, but on some of these, I think the switch itself is not working. Uh, and here's one I removed from the other unit the other day. But we won't bother trying to just replace that switch because we really need a whole actuator thing. So what I've done, I have bought in a quantity of these uh, water resistant switches and the plan is to mount them in there. I think we have to bend these tabs out of the way so it doesn't collide with the PCB. The first one I did with a switch which for my stock and these, I believe, are the same make and general design as the one that I had uh, in my stock. So hopefully that will clear the PCB and allow us to fit it in there. And we can do some other uh, repairs, to, especially on some of these where the hole is quite large, like this one. We can do some repairs to uh, fill the gap around the switch. So let's start by uh, taking one apart. We'll take apart the one that we know works because it has some batteries in it and we'll remove that switch and insert this one. And uh, I will provide ordering information uh, in the notes below for these switches and a discount code from the supplier I got these from. Uh, I should say they come in various colours. The gym owner requested red, just I think to match the uh, bodywork here. One thing that makes it a bit awkward is the screws are a long way down a shaft here, so a lot of screwdrivers just won't fit. Hmm. A lot of screwdrivers won't fit. You would have thought that would, but it's still jamming up at the bottom of the shaft. Okay, I found something that uh, sort of fits. It's probably a slightly smaller head than I'd like. It's not a brilliant fit, but it's fine. Right, that's uh, nine screws. So here's the top part. Uh, the original design includes, as well as this, the actuator there, uh, there was a, sort of a light guide. So when it's backlit, these buttons are supposed to sort of backlight up, but uh, we can't do much about that. I'm not quite sure where they pick the light up from anyway. There is a backlight on here. If we switch this on, and press the light. There is a backlight there, but how that light gets into these guides is not clear. So this particular one, that switch is actually working, but a lot of them, that switch has failed. So what I'm gonna do is mount that switch in here and run wires to this. Now, 
You might decide to just solder your wire straight to the PCB, but I'm not going to do that. I've also bought in some of these turn pin sockets, and this will allow us to uh, separate the two halves. So I can have a wire go into a connector and the connector go into this, and that makes uh, servicing a bit easier in the future. So the first thing I think is to remove this switch. Uh, I'll take the batteries out. Right. Having removed the batteries, I want to remove this switch. I could desolder it, but I think uh, really good side cutters uh, cutting those wires off will uh, be absolutely as good. Right, I've taken the uh, PCB out of the case, just to give myself slightly better access. Now there are tracks going along from here to here and indeed the switch themselves have contacts from there to there and they make a cross here when you press the button. So you'll see there's a short between there and there, between there and there. So we only actually need to make contact uh, at this end giving us more space for the switch, our new switch to uh, come down and not collide with things on the board. These turn pin sockets are bought nice thing about them is that they will plug into themselves like that. So I find the easiest thing to do is just to use two pairs of that and to one pair I will solder wires to our switch and to the other pair will connect to the PCB like so. I have to be a bit careful because not all of this kind of socket has round pins. Some have square pins and they would not fit into themselves. Right, we're going to have to bend these tags over in order to clear the board. But let's not bend them over like that yet. We first need to mount them in here. And what you might need to do is to open out some of this damage here to make room for the switch. In this case, I think that fits pretty good just as it is. What we do need to do is clear out some of the material on the inside. Okay, I've cleared out some of the material on the uh, inside of this broken hole here so that the switch will fit cleanly through there and we won't have too much broken plastic in the way of the threads on this switch. There's going to be some imperfections on the top and we'll deal with those later. Question, do you think this rubber grommet should go on the top side or the bottom side? It has a flat there that lines up with the flat here. I'm going to say that it's on the top. But what we don't have is a uh, washer to go underneath this on the panel and maybe there should be one or you could do your own, but you don't get a lot of room anyway. Because you can't really rotate that nut with the panel in the way. So we're going to kind of have to, have to rotate the switch onto the nut rather than the other way around. And to get the last few turns on, I'm going to have to rotate the switch like this. You don't want to overdo the uh, tightening of this switch because Otherwise, the nut could pull its way through this sort of rubberized plastic. Also, you want to finish up in a situation where the tags are roughly that way round, so that you can fold those out. So that's probably about right, because what we're going to do later is fill this area, this void here, with epoxy resin, which will stabilize this bendiness and tend to plug any holes, stop any moisture from sweat and drinks and stuff going through this onto the PCB. So I'd say that's about correctly set. It feels nice and secure. So let's uh, solder the wires on. Uh, any thin wire will do. Uh, you really want to keep it pretty thin so that it doesn't get in the way of the board. A bit of care when folding down these, these tabs from the switch. You don't want to uh, break the switch. OK, I'm going to solder these wires into the turn pin sockets, which is something of a crime against turn pin sockets, but uh, it is just simple and it'll work. 
and hint if we leave them in place here when we do so they won't melt as we're soldering. That done we'll put the batteries in and just test that it works and we need to carefully assemble it so that this all clears the PCB and what I'd recommend is that you apply some insulation along the top here. You could argue that we could have put a heat shrink on here but it wouldn't really help because the heat shrink couldn't go over the part of the switch which is closest to the board so there's not a lot of point. We just need to put some insulation in here. Again I'll do this with the batteries removed. This is a heat proof tape you may just use a PVC tape if that's more convenient for you. And carefully reassemble it making sure these wires don't get in front of the display. Okay that's all going to work fine but before we uh, call that a job done we're going to apply some glue uh, and I'd recommend epoxy resin in this pit here for purposes of stabilizing it and also to cover up any holes that may exist in the front of this. The greatest care when you're gluing this that you don't get any glue on the display area because of course you'll never get that off. So uh, we'll leave it at that sort of angle for the glue to set before we carry on. Okay, we're ready for final reassembly. I think the knack is to put this over the USB port. And then the rest of the case. Now we fit all the screws. Okay, tester can power down and power up. Good. And it's not just that that's a repair, it's that it's a longer lasting repair than the original design. So uh, that should uh, not cause any more trouble for the lifetime of the equipment. Okay, having now replaced a heap of these switches, which I should say are readily available, you can buy these but uh, it was more than just a switch problem, of course. Uh, let's have a look at this one. So this has uh, damage to the uh, backlight button, but a bigger concern is that it doesn't do anything. So normally when you uh, put the batteries in, it will spring to life, even if the switch isn't working. But this one, we're not seeing anything at all. Let's start by checking that the three volts gets through to the board. Okay, so the wires from the battery holder come over to this point here, so we can uh, check that we get 3 volts at these wires here onto the board. Well, that's okay, well, 2.8 volts, so huh, we could have a more serious fault with this one. Uh, let's just inspect this a little bit with the microscope and see what we can see. Um, at least some of the chips are underneath the battery holder. Just taking a look at the battery terminals here, uh, so looking at the plus, it goes straight on to this capacitor. A 3.3 ohm resistor. I'm struggling to make contact though. Why am I struggling to make contact? That's odd. I can make contact with the solder blob but when I come through to the capacitor it seems to be somewhere between intermittent and non-existent. There we are, made it for a moment. Is there a coating on this? Perhaps. All right, so we get through to the other side of the 3 ohm resistor and then onto this IC. Let's check the uh, minus terminal. So on the solder blob, 
Yeah, there seems to be some sort of coating or gunge on the top. Right, I don't know what this IC is, but presumably there'll be some output from that. So let's put the uh, batteries in and see if we get an output from that IC. So 2.8 volts in. I don't know which is the output terminal. And we've got 1.3 volts coming out of that point. Ah, there's 2.8 volts coming out there. And what about this point of the capacitor? Five volts. Okay, so it's uh, a DC to DC converter. So we have five volts out and nothing on the screen. Right, that's a radio component, so we can not worry about that for a moment. I'm going to assume that some of these capacitors at the top here have got something to do with power. Well, there's some zero ohm resistors and capacitors. We have 3.2 volts going there to the uh, main IC. So I think the main IC is being powered. I suspect that the IC has died or some other component around here somewhere that's uh, not allowing it to uh, boot. No, alas, I don't think we're going to go any further with that one. Uh, it appears to uh, have a serious fault that is uh, not going to be fixable without parts and schematics. Well, I hope you've enjoyed us uh, working on these things. Uh, if you're new to this channel and you've just come here because of these, do have a look at my outro on this video and see some of the things that I normally work on that might be of interest to you. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, there is a discount code uh, on buying these switches from the supplier I got them from, so that could be useful to you. In the meantime, I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology mainly in the near future. Bye for now. Right, let's tidy up. I've had uh, quite enough of fixing those uh, controllers for a while. I need a rest. Oh, here's <laughs> some more stuff for you to fix. Oh, uh, great. Thank you.